Hello guys, and welcome to a new Total War Three Kingdoms playthrough today by me, Vulcan. Today I have for you a new Eight Princes campaign after previously completing the main campaign with Sun Jian on very hard difficulty. We went to 100% completion, where we took every single settlement on the map, which was awesome. So make sure to go check that out if you haven't already. In this one, we're going to be starting with Soma Liang. Seek knowledge in all things. Sir Ma Leong has lived long enough to see the Wei fall and the Jin rise, and wonders now if he will survive long enough to see the flame of yet another great dynasty extinguished. So the reason I decided to play as Sir Ma Leong is because he has probably the most different playstyle to Sun Jian that I played in the main campaign. He relies on vassals in order to expand and has this resource called Jurisdiction that plays into that, which is really cool. Uh, we have this building that increases vassal tribute, so of course we're going to want vassals. And we have some really cool infantry here, the Imperial Guards, but this is the reason why you need vassals mostly, because of domain. It restricts the number of counties that can be governed without penalties. So I think the way that this works is dependent on your jurisdiction. You can only own a certain amount of provinces before you get penalties. So we're going to have to basically hand off those provinces to our vassals and have this big old empire that we're managing from a singular seat in the center, which is going to be really, really cool. His special abilities, we've got uh, the minus one mustering turns, minus 10% retinue upkeep, and minus 15% corruption faction wide. All really nice bonuses actually, especially the retinue upkeep and the uh, corruption there. That corruption's probably given to us though because we're going to require uh, the judiciary in most of our commanderies. Our noteworthy characters are Sir Maju and Sir Ma Siu. Hopefully I'm pronouncing those correctly, apologies as always for that. And continuing his bio, he has enjoyed a long and illustrious life serving as both military commander and senior advisor to the Emperor. With the death of Emperor Wu, however, his regency has been stripped and his loyalty questioned. Even now, Empress Xie demands his arrest and Sima Wei marches on the son of Sima Yi to do her bidding. We're going to keep it on Romance, and for our options, we've got it on Very Hard Campaign Difficulty and Legendary Battle Difficulty, as always. Keeping it on the 60-minute battle time limit. Let's jump on in. There is a head to every family. But does this give them the right to lead? Should a good leader seek peace? Or opportunity? They order us into battle? Or do we follow them? Do they serve the people? Or themselves? The answer is simple. 
They do what must be done. And so shall I. Emperor Wu is dead. The Jin Dynasty passes to his son, the newly crowned Emperor Hui. While some see him as unfit to lead, others consider him easy to control. With his ability to rule compromised, the Empress Dowager effectively controls the realm, manipulating the fledgling Emperor to her will. Yet this could not last. Within the Imperial family, talk of dissent only grew. The Emperor's wife, Empress Jia, colluded with his kin, Sir Ma Leong and Sir Ma Wei, to overthrow the Empress Dowager. In the aftermath, power shifted to the new regent, Sir Ma Leong. Even then, peace could not hold. The Empress, Wary of Sir Ma Leong plotted once more, convincing Sir Ma Wei to accuse Sir Ma Leong of treason, an edict was issued for his arrest. Sir Ma Wei now draws battle lines against his own blood. The Sir Ma family turns inward. Civil war looms. It is now summer 291 CE, and the eight great Sir Ma princes now look to their own ambitions. Infirm alliances, doomed to break, are forged as each prince strives to free the Emperor from the yoke of the Empress and establish themselves as the rightful regent. A dynasty trembles on the very brink. My lord, Sir Ma Leong, the Empress has usurped your regency and branded you a traitor. Even now, her allies are deployed to arrest you. Jia Hou, don't get to me so cruelly. Liu Si, mistreat me. Look, in the future, it will be even more vicious. Sir Ma Wei, to the west, is volatile and aggressive. He poses the greatest threat to you. The Emperor has issued a decree that the Emperor has no right to the throne. To the southwest, however, Sir Ma Mao also rallies forces against you. He too must be confronted. The blood of your father, Sir Ma Yi, flows within you. So you command, Sir Ma Liang. So it shall be. And here we are guys, welcome to the Eight Princes campaign. We have our first mission, Defend Yourself. For generations you have watched and advised the leaders of the Jinn. Yet now the wolves hunger and come snapping at your heels. It is an insulting turn of events, but you must move quickly to survive all the same. The Empress using poor Emperor as her mouthpiece has sent armies to arrest you. You must fight back. Only when the immediate threat is cleared can you decide how to proceed. So we must engage this army, I assume, and we get rewarded three spiritual alignment and 500 in the treasury. So there is alignments in eight princes. They all have different effects over time, once you progress their levels, that is. So one is increasing diplomatic relations with other factions, one is increasing research rate, one is increasing campaign map movement range, and one is increasing income. I believe they probably add other effects as we level them up, but I'm not entirely sure what those are. So let's go ahead and have a look at what ancillaries we got. We got the Grey Stallion, extra expertise, we got the Wooden Dog at the Stone, 
statue of Confucius. That's actually really nice. And uh, the bow there. Okay, cool. So our leader is a champion. So he's good in at dueling, basically. Let's see what we can give him. I may as well give him the wooden dog. And we can give the mount to our other guy here. So let's do that. There you go. And I would give him the bow, but we'll probably add a strategist to this army before we attack. We can grab Surma Young. Is he in our court already? He is. There's also this fella and this guy. Let's have a look at what they have. This guy's charismatic, careless, and suspicious. Not a fan of that. And this guy's philanthropic, brave, and bright. Wow, those are actually some really good traits. And he comes with the sage's armor. He could be great as a future... A future... Leader of a commandery. Right, let's add Surma Yang to our army. The reason we're going to do that before this attack is because then he gets experience. I am tempted to add that, but we'll just add the crossbows, I think. There we go. And we'll make the attack. We can always add more troops afterwards. I could add the troops so they get experience as well, but I think it's fine. Let's jump on him. Wang Here we are in our first battle. Sir Ma Liang leads our men, and it looks like our men wear green, which is interesting. By the way, uh, let's go ahead and put the spears on the flanks. I think we're actually up against some cav. And then we have all of our range forces just chilling in the middle. That's fine. Alright, that can be our group. Uh, we'll probably just let them come towards us if they want to. Can't see them yet. Maybe we'll have to wait till they come over the ridge. Unless we're going to have to head towards them, like I mentioned. We may have to move forwards. Let's have a look at what's going on. Yeah, it looks like they want us to move forwards. Alright. Let's do it. This guy has pretty good armor, actually. What about the other guy? Jing Hong. He really doesn't have much to go by, so... Why don't we just go and duel him if we can? Yeah, we're going to decline that one. I'm also going to stop this guy from dueling. I want to choose the other chap. Ah, there we go. He challenged us. Perfect. Right, it looks like we won the, the joust there. So, there we go. They're going to duel away. going to move my range forces up and we'll, they'll be forced to move forwards. So they have two units of cataphracts? Oh boy. Alright. I'm going to want to hit them with all I got. It looks like we're doing quite a bit of damage actually with the crossbows. We've only got two units of crossbows but we're already killing some of these cataphracts which is good. We do have the armor piercing on the kind of on the uh, crossbow, so I'm just gonna let them keep firing. I mean, why not? They're gonna stand there and take it. Uh, does this guy have a, an ability? He does. Okay, we might as well use it. Oh, that did a lot of damage. 
Very good. I oh, will just speed this up. Keep smashing those cataphracts. Right now they're coming towards us, which means the rest of my archers and so on are probably going to open up shortly. I am going to want to hit these cataphracts pretty hard. Because they are scary. They will hurt if they hit our lines. Although I may get one unit each to attack their archer militia. Okay, so Maliang has one. Very good. Get him back on his horse and he can come help us out. Good that they charged into the front of my spearmen. Let's just go run into them with our leader. Okay, good. Looks like this is going to be a pretty simple victory. I'm going to go and attack their leader with ours. Mown down a lot of those archer militia with our leader. Let's just charge back towards the saber militia here. Because if we can break them, that will do a lot of favours for us. Finish the battle sooner than later. I'm not sure about this duel. We could do it, but I'm not going to bother. There's really no point. Because we'll just lose like loads of health unnecessarily on our leader. When we can just pretty much finish the battle. Right, let's take him down. And that's victory. Wonderful. My sentinel took a little bit more damage than I would have liked, but overall that was a pretty decent battle. Oh damn. That is one hell of an animation. Right. We'll take the money, thank you very much. An extra 900. Don't mind if I do. And we get the extra 500 from completing the mission. The Empress demands your head. The Empress has called for your arrest. She has managed to fool the Emperor into declaring you a traitor. Although she dare not dirty her hands herself, Two of the princes of Jin, led by Sir Wei, descend upon you. The situation may seem desperate, yet there are options. In the Eight Princes campaign, the choices you make can influence your alignment in one of four ways, which in turn can affect what happens at key points in the campaign. So that's cool. I think this is going to be like really interesting part of the campaign, hopefully. Uh, but we're probably going to continue on the spiritual alignment. Getting the extra diplomatic relations with factions is something that I don't tend to do all that often. Like, I don't tend to look into diplomacy, but I think Three Kingdoms has one of the best diplomacy systems since, I don't know, a long, long time in the Total War series. So I'm going to give it a go, and it can also be used in order to, for us to get uh, vassals under our command and stuff in future, I assume. So... Uh, we'll go for the spiritual alignment, which is uh, going to be to recruit troops. Alright, rally the men. The Empress has made her move, and now her agents descend upon you to take your lands by force. Yet the fight is not done. If you are able to rally your forces and show strength, the Empress may reconsider her belligerent position. position sorry. So, recruit and maintain a total of 14 units at the start of a new turn. We currently have 17, so I guess we're going to complete that immediately. 
Yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> and we got popular from that, which is extra prestige and extra diplomatic attitude bonus with most factions. Cool. All right, so while well, we did all of that very quickly, uh, let's go ahead and get out our guy here with a couple of trebuchets. And then this guy, we can already get the Imperial Guards, which is cool. They are very good. Wow. And they're not even that much more upkeep than the Dao Sword Guards there, or even the Saber Militia. They just cost a lot to recruit. The biggest problem with doing this is our income or upkeep. <laughs> our upkeep is pretty high and our income is pretty low now. Alright, let's go ahead and place the map north so I can understand where I am. Okay, cool. We have a reform choice pending. Oh, so this is very different from the main campaign. We have different trees. So this is military. That's also military by the looks of things. You've got scoured earth, which is another military one, but that's income from looting and post-battle income which is not too bad actually. Extra campaign movement range, nice. Uh, we've got espionage. Uh, there is also trade. Construction time reduction. Extra satisfaction and population growth. And then we have minus character salary, which moves on to food production. I think we might actually go for trade. I'm not sure if we can get any trade at the start though. Let's have a look. We'll go into diplomacy. Uh, we can get trade agreements. All right, we can actually get a few. How many slots do we have? We only have one slot. So getting the extra slot would be decent. I think it takes time though. Yeah, it takes five turns to research. Right, so it's not like the main campaign where you wait five turns and then pick one. It's the opposite. You pick one and then wait five turns to get it. Right. That seems unnecessary <laughs> that they've changed that. But either way, that's fine. Uh, let's go into our diplomacy and get one of these trade agreements. We'll, we'll get the one which is the most valuable. So, Songwei. Let's uh, negotiate with you. Actually, I guess we could see what we could get alongside it. If there's a deal that is particularly good. Like, that's plus 1.2, which is... Nice. What about this guy? Plus 3.2. So we could get something extra from him, probably. Maybe we can request a regular payment on top of that. We can. Uh, not much, but maybe worth it. Request cooperation. Oh, this makes them my vassal. Granting you a portion of their income. Well, they wouldn't take that. But either way, it's interesting that's how you do it. Cool. Uh, we'll take the extra money. Don't mind me. Maybe if we make that like 57. Yeah, there we go. That's better. We get a trade agreement and we get an extra 57 for 10 turns on top of that. So that's going to improve our income a little bit. Goes up to 618, that's very nice. I am tempted to just put a couple of Saber Militia in here for now. Because we are going to be probably stood around mustering for a little while. And the next attack is probably going to be on to Sema Mal. Yeah. All right, let's go to our court. We can have an advisor. Well, let's have a look at these effects. So effects faction wide, plus 10% income from commerce, minus 5% corruption, plus one available trade agreement, plus one satisfaction. Nice. Uh, this one is plus two satisfaction, extra tribute in diplomacy, but minus 15% diplomatic attitude penalty with most factions. That's really bad. Uh, this one is extra income from all sources, extra morale when defending, plus bonus experience per season. 
I guess this guy would be best, so my young, we can get another trade agreement already, which would be great. Yeah, awesome. And this one, 1.4, cool. Uh, let's see if we can get a regular payment from him for that. Request regular payment. There we go, an extra 23 a turn on top of the trade agreement. It's only 230 over the 10 turns, but better than nothing, unless requesting a payment gives us more. Nope. We would get more out of the regular payments. You generally do get more out of the regular payments. Satisfactory deal. Nice. We already sorted out two trade agreements. What about non-aggression packs? Welcome, friend. Can we request another regular payment? It doesn't go down that low. <laughs> okay, what about a normal payment? No. <laughs> uh, Non-aggression pack's probably good for us right now anyway. Terms are acceptable. Um, so we'll keep doing that. We'll just become friendly with people. What about this guy? He's like in the middle of nowhere. We'll request a regular payment from him. Keep squeezing bunny out of everyone. Wish. Let us discuss terms. That's minus 1.3 right now. I guess we can leave it. Uh, what other quick deals can we make? Let's have a look. Seek cooperation. Baijun's actually relatively close. What shall we discuss today? Make this work. <laughs> they would become our vassal. What for? For our iron mine? Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Maybe in future, huh? So we've actually managed to push our income up to 744 whilst having a full army, which is really nice. So a good start, I feel. And I think going through the diplomacy and doing all this stuff is pretty decent. Any that say yes, I can get something out of. So that's what I'm looking for there by going through the diplomacy. Right. Here's our jurisdiction. Our domain extent is currently two. I think that's the amount of provinces or commanderies we're allowed to have. And then we get these other effects later on. Currently we've got minus 10 diplomatic relations with all factions because it's really low. But as it goes up, that will go up as well, or at least disappear. So we get rid of the penalty. That's good. What are these family estates? I wonder. Can we create vassals that are our family? Hmm. Interesting. Well, we'll move on to the next turn. That's enough looking around. Let's get on with it. Mission issued. Sir Liang builds his authority. You are a respected and admired leader, and war is upon us. Territories across the land are falling to war and discord. The people and the court look to you for guidance. But you will not simply conquer by brute force, as your wayward family members do. Your stewardship of the realm will be founded in tradition, law and cooperation, Use your diplomatic authority to secure the cooperation of one prince and the others will surely follow. If the number of regions you control directly exceeds your domain, you will suffer penalties. You can increase your domain by increasing your jurisdiction, which is gained from buildings and by gaining vassals via the secure cooperation diplomatic option. Okay, cool. So, as I mentioned before, an incredibly different campaign 
to the Sun Shan campaign that we played previously. Alright, these two chaps look okay, but we don't have enough money to recruit them. I'm probably going to head towards the Jingling livestock farm now. And we'll attack that next turn. Nothing else to do for this turn. Hopefully those characters are still in court. We don't want to recruit too many guys though, otherwise we'll be paying them loads for no reason. Mission issued. The road to the capital. You have survived the first onslaught and can perhaps take a slight reprieve. However, the Empress will not stop. Of this you can be certain. However, you must remain resolute and defy her accusations at every turn. It is possible, in the face of your continued defiance, that the Empress may reconsider her campaign against you. Capturing the Imperial capital, Luo Yang, is a crucial step to securing your power. You are free to make the attempt at any time, but be careful, doing so without sufficient authority might have unintended consequences. Building your prestige is the most certain way to prove that you are fit to lead China, but there may be other hidden ways. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and take this. It looks like there's nothing here, so we'll go ahead and just delegate that one. Thank you very much for the settlement. Don't occupy that. We actually lose jurisdiction if we uh, sack it. That's interesting. I wonder if we can piece out for cooperation or vassalage. Have a look. Uh, we will negotiate with him. Make it quick. So peace. Request cooperation. Make this work. Well, that's interesting. If we give back the land we just took. And we make them a regular payment of three and give them 1,921. They will become our vassal. Surely that's worth doing, since I don't think we can hold on to this territory anyway without getting penalties. Oh no, it looks like the main is based on commanderies, not on provinces. Otherwise, we would be overextended right now. Uh, let's go ahead and vassalize this guy. I think I'm, I'm happy to pay the money in order to do so. And I'm interested to see how that will affect our ju uh, disarray or jurisdiction here. We'll go back into diplomacy. We'll ask him for peace. If we must. And request cooperation. Make this work. Rose deal. Very well. We gave the territory back to them. And that completes the mission as well. Oh yeah, I forgot about the mission. <laughs> well we get two thousand <laughs> for completing that, so that's great. And we get even more spiritual alignment, which is cool. Oh nice. Did we get the first level? I think we did, of spiritual alignment. Which the next level gives us plus three morale faction wide. Oh very nice. And then extra diplomatic relations again. How do we know how much that's increasing by? We currently have 13. Is there no way to tell what we need to the next level? Angel's turn is currently 10. But it doesn't say exactly how much we need, does it? Either way, vassalized him. Good stuff. On to the next. <laughs> so, we have Surma Mo and Surma Chang, who we can attack. We could probably do the same thing to both of them. Let's see if anyone's willing to peace out. Ma Chang will peace out. What about cooperation? Bai Jin. Uh, so he's on minus 40. 
it is kind of tempting to just accept that and get another vassal like straight off the bat. That would be pretty ridiculous. But I guess not for now. Yeah, we'll go and attack uh, whoever was willing to peace out. Sir Chang. And that way he can become a vassal. So yeah, we'll go and zoom around to Shangyang. Or maybe we could go to the Toolmaker and do it that way. That might be the faster way to do it. Can we move? No. Alright, well, that's everything done for this turn anyway. And we have line of sight over their armies. That's going to be handy. Jin Empire has declared war on Sima Chong. Oh, we should look at the characters while we can. So Chun Yu Mo, vengeful, incompetent, and ascetic. No, thank you. Uh, this was a guy that I liked that I might want to pick up. Uh, Shi Zhu is this direct, gracious, and sincere. He's pretty damn nice. He could lead an army, for sure. Energetic, cautious, and solitary. The energetic trait's really nice, but the rest of them, not so good. Although saying that, I think solitary is okay for a sentinel. Vain, loyal, and stubborn. I don't mind loyal, but I really don't like commanders. I think this guy is the best one. We'll pick him up. We've got Surma and Li Qi here. Which one's in our army? Alright, this guy's a court noble. He actually has words of the master. He's a pretty good piece of armor. I might remove it and give it to the other guy. And we have three rangers outfits. Well, I may as well equip those on the people who are going to more likely be administrators. And then we give that to him. Since he's actually in an, in an army. And that's the best piece of armor we got. We don't have any cav in this army, so not really much point in taking that other thing there. Oh, this guy leveled up. Oh, actually, do we have a, an assignee? We do, okay. Not sure what we're going to put here. Where does our income come from? We can get an extra 50 from peasantry. if we wanted. Or we could just do this for the time being. I think that's not too bad. That way we can probably build up the small city. Because we're going to be building quite tall in our settlements, so having reduction in cost and construction time is pretty decent actually. Okay. We just need to choose what we want to get from this guy. Before we go down to Diligence, uh, then we can actually get the Stability, which is the Counteract Corruption, which is pretty good. Or I could head along to Zeal. Depends if we're going to have him in an army. I assume we probably will. We could go across and then up, but I think getting zeal is just too good. So we'll go across. Alright. Is everything done? Let's move on to the next turn. I have a request for you. Surma Ai wants to form a coalition for our clay pig. I think that's actually not a bad idea. 
Your acceptance gives us joy. Land grab. Without your command, one of your retainers is aggressively driving peasants from their lands and centralizing land ownership in a commandery. This has reduced the amount of tax-paying peasants, but public maintenance and administration has risen. Do you stop this? So unencumbered peasantry gives us extra income from peasantry, but minus noble support for the local commandery. We also get minus 10 satisfaction for 10 turns. Or we get mine, mind alignment, but less income from peasantry. Uh, what does mind alignment give? Progress to the next level. 9 out of 20. We get plus 15% research rate from the first level. That's not even that bad. I don't really want to lose the satisfaction. I don't know what his satisfaction currently is, but yeah, we'll take that. That's fine. Right, now we want to be in normal stance. We want to head towards the border. I probably should have moved through here in normal stance. That toolmaker, it might be quite high level, which would be pretty bad for us right now. <laughs> This guy's pretty low level. We'll give him his bow though. Now we can upgrade the land surveying office, but we're going to wait to upgrade the large town, I think, to get an extra building slot. Right, where's Surma Ai? He's down here. Oh. He actually controls Chengsha, which is where Sun Jian's starting position is. I wonder what uh, we do next then. Come in. Because we're going to attack this guy, Sermo Chang. But how does this coalition actually affect us, I wonder? I guess it just means that we're not going to get attacked by him for now, which is quite nice. Faction developments. Da Kin es Emissaries. Da Kin or Da Chin. Either way, those peoples beyond China's borders are purveyors of wealth and knowledge if we have but the patience to listen. The Silk Road carries foreign envoys back from distant lands, and with them comes enlightenment. A new year begins, a new opportunity to steer your people towards their destiny. Not really near the Silk Road, I don't think. By the way, let's uh, move towards the Toolmaker. It doesn't look like there's anything here. Garrison's pretty small. We should be good to take it. Right, reform choice pending. Uh, we actually have another trade plot free. This guy is willing to trade. What shall we discuss? Oh, nice, we can probably get some money from him as well. Request a regular payment alongside that. Thank you very much. Your terms are acceptable. Very good. Come, let us talk. All right. So we can take that next turn. Uh, we still need to do this reform choice, though. <laughs> I think going for the minus five percent construction cost and minus construction time is pretty good. Extra satisfaction is also very nice. So I think we're going to go for the construction cost. I should probably look at what these lead on to, actually. This one's pretty good because another trade agreement there. We are going to be friendly with people in general, so getting trade agreements is a good idea. 
And I'm also tempted to go towards like the satisfaction as well. And minus character salary, so we can have a lot of characters that are decent. Now let's research this for now anyway. Uh, that will help us build up our provinces. I might even wait until that's complete in order to spend our money. Just so we save a little bit more cash. Because there's no rush on building that. And it won't even take that long. It will take like four turns. We would be honored to ally with you. Uh, coalition to defeat barbarians. Uh, Semar Chi. I guess it's a good idea. As you wish. Get the coalition going, boys. Really not familiar with how coalitions really work. But either way. A friend in need. Relationship deepens greatly between Surma Liang and Surma Young. Yeah, I'm really unfamiliar with the coalition system. So we're now in a coalition with someone else as well. Or did we make that into an alliance? Is that what just happened? I have no idea. Either way, they proposed something and we accepted it. There is a lot of guys here. Alright, Sir Ma Yi. Incompetent, concerned, populist. We'll see deceitful, solitary, and fulfilled. Not bad. Energetic, cautious, and solitary. Humble, clumsy, and concerned. This one. Scholarly, creative, and sincere. It seems like all the ones with like good traits are only level one. That one actually has a lot of decent ancillaries, though. Let's just take him. Surma Wensai. I feel like he's a spy, but whatever. Let's go ahead and take Shang Yang. Thank you very much. We can use this to try and get Surma Chung as our vassal. We'll try and do the same thing we did before. Determined for Soma Liang. That's really nice. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into diplomacy. But before we do, let's just go towards resourcefulness. That gives us the flaming shot on the trebuchets, which is nice. We're up to 2,247 on our income. We only have basically one commandery. Right, diplomacy. Seek peace with Sir Ma Chung. I am not in the mood. Request cooperation. Never. Okay, well that's not happening anytime soon. I guess we gotta go defeat his main army in battle. One way we could do it is possibly if we set up an ambush and then kill his army. That would be the best way to do it, I think. So we'll do that in the next turn or two. Meanwhile, uh, we do want to wait until the reform's done. Four more turns. Do we wait, though? Uh, with the income we have, I don't think I'm going to bother waiting. We may as well just capitalize on the money now. Also, it does increase the garrison, and currently we you would not have no way to defend our main province. Play rap for a non-aggression pact. Uh, we actually get attitude with Sir I for doing this. I think this was the guy who we wanted to invite to our coalition or something.
Uh, whatever, that's fine. Wisdom met I don't need that wisdom. clay rat. So, so much he. Excellent. Talk. Request cooperation. Nope. He would accept it. Uh, so am I, because they are friends. Anyway, uh, let's go go ahead and set up this ambush. Eighty percent ambush chance here. Alright, let's go ahead and set it up and see if they come out towards the Toolmaker to take it back. Alright, and unfortunately guys, it has been my time. So, I'm going to leave it here. This has been a really interesting start to the campaign. The way that we're playing so far is very different from how we did in the Sun Chen campaign. We have a vassal already, and we're in a coalition with Suma Ai, which is it's not what I expected. Uh, but either way, it's worked out so far. Hopefully it will continue to do so. If we can get this ambush off on uh, Suma Chung, hopefully we can vassalize them as well by giving them back the Toolmaker. But until next time, hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.